This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Hey everyone, you're listening to The Public Affair with me, Andrew G. I see someone different every episode, but do me a favor, keep it between us. Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Andrew G, and welcome to another exciting episode of The Public Affair. Now, I'm definitely taking a different direction on this episode of the show. I definitely want to cater this to the ladies, to the to the women, to the mothers, to the aspiring mothers, everybody, because I feel like I owe that to you guys. You know, I try to... to um, to strive for diversity on the show. And I, I feel like I don't have a lot of episodes for the moms. You know what I mean? Like the, the show's for everybody, but I really wanted this one to be that one. So I'm super excited to have my next guest on here. Now, before we continue with all that, though, I definitely want to use this opportunity, of course, to thank Rogue Media Network, my boy Mike Hamilton. Mike has been with me since the beginning, since we were in the closet producing this episode of The Public Affair. Yeah, since the big girl, since Franklin. Don't play with me. Okay. <laughs> we're grassroots here at The Public Affair, darling. That's right. And of course, um, of course, to all of you guys, thank you again so much for all the love and support that you continue to show me in the show. I truly, truly appreciate it. And I have to give a huge shout out real quick to joseph hester um yes with, with the um, the business locksmith podcast or business whatever he does all i know is that he's hot and he gave me the snoop dog wine <laughs> that me and my girl kanisha are drinking on this episode because after the conversation that i think we're about to have mm. we're gonna need several glasses mm. he might need to buy us another <laughs> bottle girl okay? mm. <laughs> before we continue i definitely want to use this opportunity as well to give a shout out to just a few of our sponsors of this episode of the public affair this episode is brought to us by david santabanez with a linear real estate he is the number one sales agent in his office right he's gonna help you buy a home sell your property if you don't know how to buy a house you don't know where to begin you don't know how to start hit up my boy david santabanez he's gonna help you out okay so there's a reason why he is the number one sales agent in his office because he's not playing no games okay he works all kinds of hours making sure that him and his clients are absolutely satisfied fight to David Santabanez. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. Of course, ooh, you know I gotta give a shout out to my girl, Nika Armstrong. Well, Armstrong's Bayou Cafe. Yeah. Bayou's, oh my god, isn't she great? I want her on the show too. I want yes, her. Yes. Oh yes, please. Hurry up, Anika. Yes. Stop playing with me, okay? Yes, Listen, and at Armstrong's Bayou Cafe, they are serving the most authentic Cajun cuisine with a wide selection of signature crab cakes, signature pastas, seafood. Ba- oh, oh, the pastas, Kanisha, I just want to roll around in them. I want to roll around in them and, and go on a date or something. They're so delicious. So Listen, yeah. you guys, go check them out at Union Hall Union Grove, anything on their menu is absolute 100% authentic Cajun, and I absolutely am here for it. Anika Armstrong, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. Of course, my boy Manny Guerrero at Blue Star RV Services, a mobile RV tech. Who can fix all RVs, travel trailers, fifth wheels, toy haulers, and so much more. Listen, you guys buy the RVs, they be breaking. They break in like a week, all right? I hate going to the food trucks. You go to the food trucks to order food. The AC is not working no more. Just call Blue Star RV Services. They got you, especially if you guys are under manufacturer warranty. They will make sure that you are saving a penny or two. Follow on Facebook, call them on screen to Blue Star RV Services. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. Of course, to Jonathan Garcia with JG's Lawn Service. Listen, I already know them lawns looking a hot mess. And even though it's not as hot outside, that's like one extra chore that we just don't want to mess with right oh no just call jg's lawn service okay no matter where you are he's gonna guarantee you the best service out there including mowing weed eating edging tree trimming and so much more sabra espanol también to my boy uh jg's lawn service jonathan garcia thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of the public affair of course to jesse and tanya sotomayor with chaps pizza and burgers you guys, I love the New York style pizzas so much. I love the Mexican hot dogs as a side so much. Yeah, I'm that guy, okay? I love that they have ice cold beer. And I feel like that is a good restaurant for everybody that if you don't know what you want to eat, let's just all go to Chep's. And everybody gets a little bit of what they want. I absolutely love it, you guys. It's over there, 3125 Bell Me Drive. You go check them out for their daily lunch specials. They have their dinner item menu. Dinner menu items that is actually <laughs> growing as well. The Chef's Pizza and Burger, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode. And of course, to Jeff Davis, the Texas car plug at Universal. University Mastakia, who I just saw right before I got here, you can hit him up to get the best deal. Listen, if you don't got no credit, if you got bad credit, if, if you know, if the man left you and then he left you with some effed up credit, you just hit him, my boy Jeff Davis. <laughs> no, 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 just hit him, Jeff Davis. Hit up Jeff Davis. <laughs> He's gonna get you rolling off the lot. It's something cute, all right? He's got you. No worries. <laughs> He's gonna get you the best deal as well. To the Texas Carp Plug, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. You got Kanisha, I told you I was gonna behave on the show. I did. I told I you know. I was I told you I was gonna behave. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for having me. Listen, you guys, I've done this show for four years already. The bitch is tired. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's tired. But no, you want to know what? There's a lot of people that have been waiting a really long time to be on the show, and Kanisha was one of them. She really sat patiently waiting for me to invite her on the podcast and I've been really watching her do her thing as you guys can see here we are covered in a plethora of books that she wrote all by herself uh, she is an entrepreneur she is a motivational speaker she is a survivor she is the CEO of Create and Blossom Literary, Literary Studios my girl Kanisha Griffin is finally here oh, on man. The Public Affair hello <laughs> hello man thank you so much for coming thank you my friend I'm digging the braids it's, thank you. it's giving brandy 90s I'm feeling like yes, brandy 
sitting, yes. uh, sitting up in my room. But you know, okay. I've been in my room. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it's so great to have you here, Kanisha, because you, you want to know what, like, I, I, like I said earlier, a lot of people, you know, have reached out to me wanting to be on the show, and I, I never mm-hmm. felt like the time was right with us. You know what I mean? And, yeah. And um, shout out to Danny Stone, who yes. she sent me. You, you, okay. you grew up, you glowed up so much. You had a media kit, and she emailed me the media <laughs> kit. Yeah, and, and I got to reading it. You know, I finally had a chance to just sit down and just take a look at it. Yeah. And there's a lot to you that I would have mm-hmm. never thought. Mm-hmm. And, and I really hope you guys, honestly, like all jokes aside, while we're drinking the, the Snoop Dogg wine and we're making other jokes, isn't it? Kanisha has really been through a lot of things that a lot of people mm-hmm. find difficult to talk about. Yeah. And I think, I hope that specifically the women, but everybody watching this show today, mm-hmm. um, if they are going or have been through what you went through, which we'll get to here in a, in a second, mm-hmm. um, can, can find... Um, a, a way to, for, of redemption, if that makes sense. Yes. Okay. What, 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 what do you say about that? Absolutely. You know, if anything, I hope that when I share any, you know, pieces of my story, I know that there are several different, <laughs> several different things that, that have happened over the course of time. Yeah. And you know how sometime in life you'd be like, it's one thing after another. Girl, yes. You know, life yeah. just be lifing sometimes. Please. Right now. <laughs> don't, don't get me started. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. There's one trial after another, one challenge after another, one obstacle after another. Mm-hmm. So if anything, I hope that people take away the um, learn, I guess, from my resilience, uh, sure. my faith, my hope, uh, and my desire to help other people heal, too, and get better. Because at you. the end of the day, I think I realized that all of that is, for me, is to help other people, sure. too. Sure. Yeah. And I'm, I'm here for it, Kanisha. I'm here. So let's yeah. not even waste any time. Um <laughs> Your life growing up. Can you talk yes. to us a little bit about, well, first of all, introduce yourself. Everybody's like, yeah. Andrew, who is this? And I love the smile, by the way. Oh, thank the you. The smile's good. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just introduce yourself to anybody who's like, Andrew, who is Kanisha Griffin? And yeah. who is this woman on the show, Pretty in Pink, Aww. with the books everywhere? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, <laughs> I am actually from New Orleans, Louisiana. So, I love to start there. Like I'm my a, girl, Nika. Yes. Yes. I am a, no, a NOLA girl, New Orleans 504 girl, whatever mm-hmm. you like, hot girl, whatever you like to Darling. call it. <laughs> <laughs> From New Orleans, yeah. uh, born and raised, okay. so deep in the heart of the city, sure. uh, public school systems, um, graduated from uh, one of the best schools, we like to say, yeah. uh, in New Orleans, McDonough 35 Senior High. Yes. Um, but that was, you know, that was my life. You know, yeah. I lived in that kind of city. And if you've ever been in New mm. Orleans, you know, New Orleans is a fun party town, yeah. busy, always just full of tourists and tourist things. But... Um, I lived in the hood, okay. in the midst sure. of uh, the tourists had their section, and then I had my section. Probably the, the, <laughs> the part of New Orleans that people don't really see. Exactly. They think, automatically, they think Bourbon Street, yes. shots, strip clubs, you know. Yes. But we're, we're not getting to see where no, you're from. We're okay. not, yeah, not not quite, you know, that part of New Orleans. And, and, I, and I love and miss my city so much. I'm yeah. not going to lie to you. Um, okay. I actually thought when I came to Waco that I... To me, Waco was about as small in the sense of New Orleans, though New Orleans is super overpopulated. Okay, I think, okay. So small in that, I feel like you can get to most places in about 15 minutes, sure, maybe, right? Sure. So it's not like Dallas or uh, Houston girl, or okay. Atlanta, you and know? <laughs> Listen, traffic. The, uh, who? No, right? <laughs> you know, we don't have to deal with those things. Got you, got and you. in New Orleans, it was very similar. I could get yeah. to where I needed to get quickly. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, just grew up in that and in, um, in that area. I actually uh, lived in Atlanta, Georgia for a few years. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so went through some some interesting life experiences when I lived in Georgia. Okay. Um, we'll probably get into some of that. Yeah. And then um, came back to New Orleans because um, Atlanta kind of kicked me in the butt, if you know what I mean. Okay. It kind of did. So sure, I moved sure. back. And then actually ended up in Texas by way of Hurricane Katrina. Oh, okay. Got you. Yes. Hurricane Katrina gotcha. just had its 19th uh, anniversary. Mm. And um, the city is still Girl. not the same. No, I'm sure. And, mm. and, and, you know, just fun fact, I lived in Hialeah, Florida when Katrina hit, mm. but we got category one. Like it was nothing oh, wow. compared to the New Orleans. So, I mean, yeah. uh, shout out to you, you mm. know, for surviving. And, I, and I, my heart goes out to you. Um, I, yeah. I do, Kanisha, want to jump right into some of the childhood traumas that you have went through. And, sure. and before we do, some mm-hmm. of them are pretty explicit. And I do want to make sure that you acknowledge that you are in a place of um, we are not judging. Sure. Uh, I want you to be comfortable. 
and, and share what you want, please. Thank you. Um, but when I was reading through your media kit, um, mm -hmm. I, I read something along the lines of sexual assault or mm -hmm. sexual abuse, mm -hmm. um, which which makes my skin crawl even to say. Mm -hmm. And I first, want, before we continue with that conversation, want to apologize that that's something that you had to experience in your life. Thank you. Because um, I couldn't imagine. Yeah. Can we talk a little bit about that? We can. Yes. Okay. Um, and it's funny that we have some of my books out um, because. Um, you know, and I know we'll talk about what I get to do with Create and yeah. Blossom. Um, a big part of, of that is helping other people tell their stories. Mm -hmm. um, I often meet with writers who struggle with telling certain parts of their stories because it's just too hard. Yeah. And I actually am one of those writers, mm. too. Okay. I have been working on trying to tell this part of my own story for a long time. A long Oof. time. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to, just, to the public affair. Ooh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So just try to, to just try to communicate it because okay. when you are going through the writing stage, you're almost reliving as you're recounting and mm -hmm. you're feeling again. It, it you know makes all those emotions come back up. Okay. So there are two different um, events that actually took place in my life. Okay. One when I was 12 years old, and one happened when I was um, 19. Mm. The one that happened when I was 12, which um, I don't even think I got into much detail yet. Okay. Right? So this will be the first time I ever did that. Okay. It's a big step for me. So Th thank you for, <laughs> thank you for sharing. And, and yes. truly, my heart, yeah. Man, so when I was uh, about 12 years old, there was, um, there was a boy in school that liked to follow me around all the time and try to tickle me. Mm. Just like, you know how you just tickling somebody, playing yeah, with yeah. them, catch them, little tickle them. Stuff, just, you know, look at stuff like yeah. that. Well, he would do it so much <clears throat> to where it would have me on the floor. Like, he would have me on the floor squirming. Now, he was a big guy, and I'm a little, little girl, right? Was so he I'm this significantly little thing. older than he you? Was, no, we were, oh. in the, we were the same, same age. Same grade. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, we were in the same grade, and he was just a lot bigger, uh, taller and bigger than me. And I was just a mm. little bitty, tiny little bitty thing. And it was always hard for me to get away from him. And... I will never forget uh, this one time, and this was going on for most of like my seventh grade. I yeah. think it was about my seventh or eighth grade year. Okay. Well, anyway, one time um, I remember the uh, several of my friends. I was walking down a hallway at the end of the hall, and he was coming like up the stairs as I was getting ready to go down the stairs, and mm -hmm. we were like on the third floor sure. in the stairwell area. And I'll never forget, the window was open, and well, I can look down and see some of my friends. In fact, I was just looking at some of my friends. They were with, like, the Garden Club or the Horticulture Club, I sure, think. That's sure. what it's called. So they were down there, and I seen him come up the stairs, and I immediately tried to run. So he would torture me so much with just tickling me mm -hmm. that it would – every time I see him, I'd get scared. Okay. And so much so that I even had other friends. Like, there, I'll never forget, that was this Hispanic guy, um, boy in my school – that was also really big, too. And mm -hmm. he would be like, I'm going to protect you. I'm going to keep you safe. I'm not going to let this guy get you. I would be looking for, um, I cannot think of his name. I'd be sure. looking for this guy to protect me right. because I always felt like the other guy would was always trying to harass me, mm -hmm. you know, and, and capture me. It just wasn't funny anymore. Right, you know, like right. the tickling and the playing and all that stuff. You know, when somebody says stop, that's it. stop. Sure. You know, like that's they've had enough. But he just would not stop leaving me alone. And so... He would capture me. He would tickle me even harder to where I'm like crying and squirming on the floor. And then eventually just let me loose and then I run off. Well, this one particular time, he actually caught me. Um, nobody was there on the edge, uh, on the, the back of the stairwell where mm -hmm. we were. And he cornered me. And then, I, um, again, the window was open. So I remember him lifting me up. And he was, again, really big, so he could overpower me. I remember him lifting me up. And somehow or another, I ended up hanging halfway out of the window, three flights up. Oh my God. With him groping me, having his hands, you know, all over me okay. in all kind of places. Sure. Again, the window is, I am hanging like upside down, mm -hmm. unable to like move and get in. I, I thought I was going to die. Okay. Like, I, I literally was like, this, this must be it. You know, yeah, this must yeah. be the end for me. Um, and so then somebody else ended up coming up the stairs. So with, then when he released me, I didn't fall outside. So kind of pulled me back in and released me to the floor. And then he ran off. Mm. And then there I was. And what I, what I didn't realize, like I, I suffered with things like 
nightmares. I didn't yeah. know why. Like, I'm a little kid, so okay. I don't know why I keep having these bad nightmares. I don't know why I can't sleep. I mm. feel anxious and nervous all the time. Um, while I'm dealing with all of these, like, PTSD, you know, symptoms, I keep wondering, you know, being more afraid than anything. I feel yeah, like before yeah. that time in my life, I was just this um, carefree, happy Mm-hmm. girl and until you know? that event took place until that happened and did, then, he, did he get away I, with that i guess so yeah okay so nothing <laughs> ever happened Mm-mm. did you ever say anything kenesha i think i was probably too afraid okay to say anything at the time okay and i think also because i was also the in my family i'm i'm the middle child oh was I the see. Middle child. Okay. so i had okay. the middle child Everything I did at that time as a as a preteen, mm-hmm. I felt like most of what I did was wrong. Yeah. I was the one always in trouble, the black okay. sheep that went in my own way, that did my own thing. Sure, I sure. did not I was not like my brother. My brother went to the Marine Corps. He was the good the good boy. He he passed away ten years it was ten years this year. Mm. But my brother was the good boy, and my little sister, you know, she was the good one. She was a baby. Sure, so, sure. you know, a baby could get so, away with anything. But so this, and, and you know, we, we talk about sexual assault, and it, it really can be, you know, it, it can be a, a family member. It could be somebody that you're just in middle school with, for that matter. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And so mm-hmm. this, ha- was it just this one time that, that it actually got that far? Or did it end up becoming like a recurring thing? This, after that, after that one time, mm-hmm. that, that was it. Like, okay, okay. I didn't run into another experience with, with that boy, but I do remember feeling so much fear. I remember telling one of my youth leaders back in the day at, at church, like, I keep having this weird feeling like that something bad is going to happen. That yeah. Something else bad. Like I, I just lived in fear, you know? And I had to catch the bus to New, in New Orleans yeah. to school every day. Sure, you know, sure. I was in the hood, like, drive-by shootings happening all the time around me. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, okay. drug dealers all around me all the time. Friend, <laughs> you know, this was that was my life. Right. And but I was fine with it. But you were normalized before. to that, though. You know, you were normalized to that. But what you weren't normalized to, I think it's fair to say, mm-hmm. was this boy groping you. Some kind of attack. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Did you ever confront him? I think I seen him one time, like years later, you know, like at school, I I didn't. I just avoided him. Okay. So I think I was just too afraid to see him again mm-hmm. after that. And so I just I pulled back. I just yeah, always yeah. went in a different direction, always stayed. I could, didn't go to one side of the school. I just avoided him completely. Did it change your behavior and and how you were as a kid growing up? I mean, because you you mm-hmm. you didn't tell anybody. You didn't tell no. like your parents. I could not you, tell my. Parents, you couldn't tell no. nobody. But did you no. start acting out then? Did, would you say that it it made you start acting out? I think it it definitely changed my behavior. I think it made me more um, more isolated. Okay. It made oh, me really? isolate. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. It made me isolate more. I think it probably also made me more angry. Mm. Um, and not even understanding why I'm so angry, yeah. like upset at what happened. But I also was like, I wasn't getting along with my parents back okay, then. Okay. So then it really like nobody cares. I can't trust anybody to tell them this because sure. everything I do is wrong. Yeah, I and see. I just wrestled with suicidal thoughts Ugh. and just all of that stuff. Like as a young girl, yeah. so so that was awful. But then when you fast forward a little bit, uh, a little bit later, you know, some years just later, some when years I was later, because you were third when that what 12 or 13 12. when that happened mm-hmm. so now we're going to 19 so now we're 19 years yeah. old and uh and this story is um i was interviewing with the cia and so yeah Can that's a part of my story <laughs> okay <laughs> no i just I, I had this direction of where the story is going to go and i hope it's not going to go there but you were interviewing with the cia i was interviewing with the cia mm-hmm. at the time and uh, the and, this, and that's a funny story that w- maybe I'll get into the whole okay. thing with you soon. But they found me because I applied for a job like a couple of years prior. And they finally got to my application, contacted me at my job's work email when I was living in Atlanta, which who else can do that but the CIA, right? right, right. So they found me. And um, I was going through the entire process. I even had a conditional offer um, with the position, they even flew me to Virginia to interview with them at their yeah, buildings and everything. So it was a sure. very cool, amazing experience, actually. Right. But they had to contact everybody in my past from the past seven years. Everybody. And I had broke, I was dating this one guy and mm. we had broke up. Yeah. 
Anyway, they contacted this guy because uh, they had to do an investigation on, like, everybody in my past, from my past seven years. And so they interviewed him. He reached out to me and was like, hey, I'm having a family get-together. Everybody in my family misses you. Would love for you to come over to my new house. You know, whatever. So... I was reluctant at first, like, no, nah, I mean, we broke up all them years. I probably, yeah, yeah. you know, shouldn't, you know, whatever. But I ended up going. And it was a significant amount of years, too, though. It, it, was it wasn't just, like, like some months. Like, no, no okay. this was some time, like, a long time had passed. And this guy, because they got in touch with him about me, he reached back out to me okay. to, to try to connect again. So I ended up going to his house mm-hmm. and... um I remember that he had like all these bottles of wine, which is like all across his. Uh, uh, and I didn't want to drink and purposely because yeah, yeah. I was like, mm, I really just want to st- say hi to everybody and just leave. I, mean, I don't want to okay. just, you know, be here because yeah. we're not cool, you know, anymore, sure, really. Sure. Right. So why, mm. why would I even be here? But I stayed anyway. I didn't drink anything. I said hello, was socializing with his family for a little while because uh, we act. We were in a relationship for about a year, so I yeah. knew them, you know, a bit. So it was nice to see them. After everybody left, he ended up uh, say, hey, let me give you a tour of my house. Mm. And so I was like, you know, uh, you know, I don't know. It's getting kind of late. I might want to go. Yeah. He insisted. And it was something about how he locked the door when everybody left after I said yes that gives me the chills like still Mm. like when he locked that door I knew something was wrong like why would you lock your door like that yo Mm -hmm. like they felt like something out of a movie something crazy he just locked that door real hard and was like okay let me show you upstairs so he started showing me his studio he was a musician who had a he had a studio upstairs and he was showing me the other rooms when we got to one bedroom in his house um, upstairs that's when he closed the door behind himself locked the door and locked me in and um, there were certain objects you know I've been to therapy and I've talked to counselors about sure, this sure. so many times and I keep remembering certain things that were like in the room like at the time I remembered an ironing board for some reason I just remember an ironing board stand just standing up mm-hmm. over here by his closet that was by a window and I was like, well, what do you, you know, just looking around, just checking things out that was in the room, really feeling very uncomfortable knowing that there's no reason I should be locked in this room with you. But he obviously had plans, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, and it was definitely, you know, my worst nightmare at the time. He locked the door, he shoved me to the ground and he raped me. So he, he raped you? He did. Yeah. Wow. And he raped me. And um, it was almost uh, the things that he was saying, I recall, was almost like it was punishment for us not being together anymore it was weird oh, wow. he was even saying like really mean uh, evil awful things you sure, know sure. super um and i fought him and fought and fought and um i just wasn't strong enough i suppose and so uh, eventually it just happens mm-hmm. kenisha i am so sorry to yeah. he- oh my god have yeah. you have you spoke with him no no do you mm-hmm. find do you find a um do you find almost like an obligation to yourself to confront these individuals that have that have like almost left their mark on your life? Mm-mm. No, not me. Okay. I think sometimes I wonder, like, if I saw this guy again, what would I say? What would I do? Sure. I mean, yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Same with the you know with the other one because and and actually this was really funny because I'm friends with a lot of my um, classmates on mm. Facebook mm-hmm. and I actually ran into this guy's profile I just, mm. just to see a picture of him was right, just right. too much you this know? is and the, that's the just twelve the guy year old from middle yes yeah okay was just too much because I had nightmares about this guy to this day face. to this mm-hmm. day like nightmares wow what a lot of people don't realize what a lot of with uh, And I can't speak for all women. I know I have listened to so many women tell me their own stories about being raped and assaulted and violently with weapons involved and all of that. And it all affects us so differently, Mm -hmm. you know. But there is a there's an after effect of it. It's not just, hey, I've been through this thing. All right. I've been to therapy for a year and a half. You know, I'm good, you know? No, yeah. No. It sounds like it still lingers to this day. I almost. still have nightmares. Right. I still have bad triggers. It's definitely still have bad triggers. I still, um, 
And I think now with with having been in therapy before that I can identify what those things are. But I think I still have to be careful of certain things. For example, let me give you an example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to a um, I went to a human trafficking course. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have participated. I have some friends. I don't know if you've ever heard of Sheepdog Response before, but uh, they are an organization that that's out of Austin, and yeah. they do firearms training, jujitsu, oh, okay. things like that. Yeah. Amazing organization. They have a, a Protector One course for women. I actually did a Protector One course twice. Mm. Um, I also love to go shooting in my in my downtime, so I love yeah, to, sure. to go to the range. And um, and I was always curious about jujitsu, but I was nervous about it because I know that certain positions, because of what the situation was like when I was 19, yeah. might trigger me badly. And I will never forget being in there at one of those classes. And it was a lady who was a black belt, you know, martial arts instructor. Sure, sure. She was just standing over me in this one position and I had to try to break out of it. And when I tell you, I bust out crying in that moment. That was like several months ago. You in that triggered. moment, in, yes. Yeah. And then when those, sometimes when those triggers happen, some somehow it puts your mind right back there again. Yeah. So I felt like I was right back in that place. I had to like snap out of it and realize sure. I wasn't there. I was here. You sure, know what sure, I mean? Sure. Or, or there. But when I went to the uh, sexual assault, um, I mean the um, human trafficking or sex trafficking class that was in Austin, it was actually there at Sheepdog. And I'm good friends with one of the detectives that was also hosting it. And I was sitting there, and I'm listening to a couple of the survivors tell their stories about that'll blow your mind away, man. Yeah, Some for of the sure. things, for and sure. pff, that's just crazy. But what was even crazier for me is that I could identify with a lot of what they were saying. Yeah. A lot of what they were experiencing. Yeah. I was like, me too. Wow. What? You know, like. I, you know, and, and it's almost it's almost a, a, like a nuanced question or a weird question, but you know. You you mentioned that you didn't you never confronted your attackers, right? Do you think, looking back at it now, do you find it necessary to do so to move on, or do you, like if another woman was to confront you about it? Do you know what I mean, or do you think that that's unnecessary? Sure. Well, because you know, not not by no means to um, solidify what they did because sure. it's, it's wrong, but you mm-hmm. know you, you kind of look at things into like what was going on, what happened to them in their lives. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And, was something going on with you, or are you just like really evil? Mm, it's right. an evil thing to do. I mean, is that fair to say? I don't, I don't want to, you know. Yeah, no, no, okay. no. Yeah, I can understand that. Yeah. Because I, I think, and we're all not born to just, you know, mm. in, inherently. Well, I don't know, and maybe maybe some of us are. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Of, well, because know, it exists so much, and people sin, people don't speak you know, out about the, it. And, but the thing is, too, that they, they hold this grasp on you guys as victims, right? Yeah. I feel, and I, 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 I've talked to, to to plenty of people that have been sexually assaulted, you know, in their childhood and stuff like that. Yeah. And and they hold they hold this this grasp to you guys. To, yeah. to, to silence you, it's almost as if they have power mm. over you in your life, mm-hmm. w- w- leading to how do you find the power to forgive, mm. um, which we're going to talk about when we get right back here on The Public Affairs to so make sure you guys stay tuned. <laughs> hey guys, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of The Public Affair. My very special guest, Ms. Kenesha Griffin. Now, before we continue... I definitely want to use this opportunity to give a shout out to just a few more of our sponsors of this episode of The Public Affair. This episode is brought to us by Bandas Hauling Service with Julian and Abanda. That's right. They don't dump trailers. You fill it up. They're going to haul it away. They also do junk removers. They do tree brush removers. They haul cars in and out of town. If the car breaks down out of nowhere, just call Bandas Hauling Service. They'll come get you no matter where it's at, no matter what time at night. They got you. Oh, and I know you guys like to have those big, giant, you know, indigenous Mexican parties, uh, slash and Mexican parties uh, where there's trash everywhere. Make sure you guys call Bandas Hauling Service for the, dump- the dumpster rental. Please do so with the number on the screen, all right? Yeah, book now with the number on the screen. Julian Anabanda, thank you guys so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. Of course, to Poyo Box and Audio, my boy Jeffrey Montreal, home for all your LED needs, auto accessories, installation and stereos, door speakers, and audio systems. He also specializes in building custom software enclosures and much more now. Now, Kenesha, I don't live in the hood, but I got the base because of, I do, I got the base with, with the Britney Spears because of Poyo Box and Audio. Okay. Your one-stop shop to get everything done and run roof. Make sure you guys hit him up for all your car modifications to Jeffrey Montreal. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. Of course, to Myra Rosadas with Strike a Post Photography, a digital photo booth 
booth business perfect for parties private events corporate events and so much more can you show you need a photographer if you if you're just seeking a new photographer hit up my girl Maya Rosada she's up and coming and she's the goat okay she, yes I, I don't want nobody sleeping on her she is doing the damn thing she's also offering digital customized invitations as well baby showers birthday parties weddings whatever don't mail invitations ew this is not 2000 uh, just get digital invitations strike post photography say habla espanol también to my girl Maya Rosales. thank you so much for sponsoring this episode and of course the brothers roofing Romano with Jesus Sanchez from Mart Texas is in He's a small construction business for Mart, specializing in general roofing needs and so much more. He um, will also help you protect your home from the crazy. Listen, it's giving storms all of a sudden. Like we're in September, it's giving storms. I'm, I'm not dealing with this tornadoes. Okay, know. Twister. All right, the movie <laughs> Twister. Okay, Rotten Tomatoes, 100%. And, and you know, and, but he's going to come help you. And of course, with all the remodeling as well, he's totally to go. To Jesus Sanchez, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. And I. Can't go on without thanking uh, Soko. So I'm just so grateful to be partnered with Soko Soccer Academy. Dominic Gutierrez and Ariana Gutierrez. Um, they offer team, small group, and individual skills training. Uh, Soko Kids is one of the most prestigious, one of the most sought after, one of the best child care services in Central Texas. Uh, keeping your kids active, keeping them social, keeping them just really engaged. Yeah, and I'm so proud of Soko and everything that they're doing. To Dominic Gutierrez, Ariana Gutierrez, um, thank you guys so much for all the support that you give me in the show. Um, if you guys need individual skills training with professionals, also to my boy George DeLeon as well. And of course, the public affair is a, remains a very proud sponsor of the Soko Soccer Teams. I want to give a huge shout out to my brother, Coach Mauro Maldonado, Coach Megan, Coach Jeff Knapp. You guys truly are the GOATs, and I'm just so proud of you and everything that you guys are doing for the kids. Truly, truly, truly keep up the good work to Soko Soccer Academy. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of the public affair. All right, guys. So, like I said, uh, you know, before I abruptly took a break, um, because I had to, I'm not going to have to get myself together. It was, uh, you know, and I really want to thank you for sharing what you've shared. So, so far, you know, because I, I definitely think it gives a lot of context to who you are today. You know what I mean? Yes. And, you know, we, we talked right before the break about forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And we talked about, you know, part of the reason why you forgive people is that they don't have power over you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And these people that abuse you or abuse these people mm -hmm. or anybody for that matter, uh, uh, almost would seem as if they have power over you to, mm -hmm. to keep you silenced. Mm -hmm. How do you find forgiveness and have you for them? I have. I okay. have. And, and, with that forgiveness, well, first of all, I'm a person that I believe in God mm -hmm. and I fully believe in the Bible and I fully believe that we are to to forgive one another like the Lord has forgiven us. And yes, I actually do think about what could have happened to this guy yeah. to make him think that something like this was OK, mm. you know, like. You know, and, and in some cases, attackers may have also been abused, you know, or may have also dealt with, you know, their own things mm. in their past, you know, or may have had awful examples in front of them. I've always been the kind of person to think about, like, every angle sure. in, in situations. And it's so strong for you to like think that, that way, too, though. It has to be, especially you know, given what you've gone through, Kenisha. You know, like, I, it just, I, I don't think I could help it. Yeah. I think because of... of stories and i think we all have a story I, that's a part of mine unfortunately mm. you know that that i have carried and still work through sure to this day um even been even being in some marriages with mm. some um questionable situations yeah as well mm. um yeah I have struggled, <laughs> Andrew, more yeah, yeah. than I'd like to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's okay, that's okay. You know, we can Jenna, move on if needed be. Okay, you know, the Snoop Dogg wine is getting to her. She, she, she is about to start talking about other stuff. I'm trying <laughs> you, real yeah. hard. But, but <laughs> the forgiveness comes from your faith in Christ. It comes, uh, yes, and the way He moves. You know, um, and, yes. and just you know, one of the other things that you really went through, Kanisha, um that a lot of women will go through and mm -hmm. that's hard for you miscarriages mm -hmm. five miscarriages now you have seven kids now i do which god bless yes. okay because okay i i don't even have one i can't imagine <laughs> going home and asking something if it's hungry much less seven things if they're hungry okay <laughs> so but yeah. no 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 um but on a serious <laughs> note a lot of women yeah watching this will mm. maybe have spent years trying to have a child mm -hmm. do you know what i mean and some ultimately being told you know you can't have kids naturally mm. and, you know you're going through constant mess can we talk a little bit about that and, and your experience on that absolutely mm. and um i wish i had one of those books with me i was looking through um yeah. 
my, my collection. You have home. a plethora of books here, by the way. Know, C- congratulations and, uh, to you on all these books. Oh, man. Thank you. Yes. Which we'll get into in a sec. I'm sorry. Go yes, ahead. Yes. But Miscarriage is also a part of my a part of my journey. You know what this reminds me of? Who was it? Gabrielle Union mm-hmm. wrote a book. I think it was called We're Going to Need More Wine. Oh, girl. And listen. Shout out to Joseph Hester <laughs> with the business. Joseph, uh, we thank you. Jo- and Joseph's so hot, too, but he has a wife. So. <laughs> <laughs> he does. He has a wife. I said I'm not doing married men in 2024. <laughs> and I stuck with that. Okay. Listen, <laughs> anyway. Joseph is amazing. He is so great. Yes, I still phenomenal. have your bottle of wine, Joe. So are. I thank you. And the you. three of us are, are excuse me, <laughs> shining st- um, uh, clients at Elite Barbershop. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Elite Barbershop. The three of us go to Elite Barbershop. Listen. Yes, girl, don't play with me. Love them, okay? <laughs> they are yes. all my brothers. Love them. All of them for love a them. long time now. That's why he's so hot because he goes to Elite Barbershop. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't know he was a client. He does. He goes. Know. I didn't know either until I was well, here. There we I, go. All right. See? I didn't know he had a podcast, so he messaged me and said, come on my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and I love him. I do. He's so great. No, He's Joseph amazing. Hess, you're amazing. We and you, thank you for even having me on your show out yes. soon. But yes, okay, yes, miscarriages. Yes. You, you had to experience that in your life. I, I experienced that in my life, unfortunately. Mm. Um, so... Just to go through, uh, to walk a little bit through that story, I was working in higher education. Sure. This was before I became an author, before I started with books. Okay. I was living in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and um, I was actually, I just I actually had found out I was pregnant um, before I got married, mm-hmm. and this is when, um, after Hurricane Katrina. So during, when Hurricane Katrina happened, just to kind of walk through that timeline. Yeah, yeah. Hurricane Katrina happened, I evacuated from New Orleans to Dallas, I was engaged to be married at the time mm-hmm. to my first husband. Sure. And we were planning a wedding in the Botanical Gardens in New Orleans. We were planning this big old wedding, this beautiful big thing that happened. But then the storm happened, mm-hmm. and we and I ended up evacuating to Dallas. Um, instead, we ended up having a very small wedding, and we actually ended up getting married a lot sooner than what we had planned. Okay. Because I found out I was pregnant. <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Found out I was pregnant. Um, but unfortunately, I got married. And then um, this was one of those early um, losses. And sure. so so this is what the miscarriages looked like for me in the beginning. Some of them were. So I would never forget going to the doctor. You, you go to the doctor. You have your, your sonogram, right? They, right. they check the, do the ultrasound. They check for the heartbeat. They check for the measurements of the baby and all that. The first time I went, you could see a heartbeat, you know, what, about maybe eight to ten weeks Yeah. Uh, pregnant. You could see the heartbeat. It was all just fine. Uh, so like, all right, everything's, I'm still nauseous. I'm just, you know, trying to yeah. figure out my life. First time being pregnant. Um, had another visit. Ended up coming back again. And this time there was no heartbeat. Mm. So then it was like, well, what do you mean? There's... No, Harvey. It was just one there yeah, yeah. a few weeks ago, and everything was fine. So what do you mean that there's there's nothing there? You know, again, he's like, you know, we'll check it again, you know, in a few days or whatever. And mm. so we ended up checking again. It definitely confirmed that um, I had lost a baby. Wow. And uh, in that first instance, I actually had to take some medication to – uh, to let the the baby release. Sure, in, sure. In other words, uh, from – from me at home and it was I remember it being extremely wow. painful like like uh-huh. having really bad contractions mm-hmm. at home like on my way home and just suffered and suffered and suffered and I actually described that entire experience in that scene in the book that I wrote because I wrote uh, a book once, once upon a child oh yes that talks about my my miscarriage and you said we don't have that book and here. I don't have that one you yes, guys go pick up online. once upon a child it's yes a, yes, yes it's available online but um but yeah and I talked about that just what that felt like like uh-huh. you know Okay, so I, I lost a baby, and then I found out I was pregnant again, like several months later, and then the same thing happened again. Oh, my God. And this time, I was just a little bit further along. Sure, sure. So then it was like, well, why? My, my, and my doctor, you know, shout out to Dr. Roderick Diggs. This man mm-hmm. was, he's like the best OBGYN, I am telling you, so good at what he does, so caring. He let me, I will never forget, crying in his office on the floor, weeping just mm. like what's wrong with me sure. why can't i keep a baby you know yeah. after the second time as and if you haven't been through enough trauma in your life at that point you know, you know? I mean, and it's like damn and one thing true. after another <laughs> i was Holy already cow, like Ugh, right just hoping for yeah. something some kind of um you know love and you know something for me to, you know, that i could love and have and just i felt like that was just a thing taken away from me too 
And so, yeah, that was really hard. Uh, but anyway, I found out that I was uh, pregnant with my oldest. Well, b- before then, my doctor decided to aggressively look at everything. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, I didn't really have to speak up a lot. What I usually encourage a lot of women to do is if you have questions medically, like, do your homework, reach out to your doctors, ask for more tests, ask for another ultrasound, ask for, you know, more things so that, I mean, you really do have the control yeah, over, sure. over your health. So, so dig into that. Don't just, you know, cause some doctors really won't go that far. I just happen to have a good doctor yeah. who was willing to let's throw the textbook at it gotcha. and figure out what's, what's wrong with you. Okay. Gotcha. And we learned from there that I had some kind of blood clotting disorder mm. And every time I'd get pregnant, blood clots would like attack my uterus, you know, mm. and uh, and and would unfortunately attack the baby. So, because of that, I had to take like um, what they call heparin injections, which is um, what is it like a blood thinner? Oh yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so I had gotcha. to get on. I had to take I had to take shots in my stomach every Eesh. day Eesh. for nine months. Wow. For each kid. Wow. Mm-hmm. And and even though we we under we we and we had a theory of mm-hmm. what was happening, I still had three other miscarriages. One I remember being ex- two actually remember being very early, like right after I found out I was pregnant, and then mm. you know I I lost a baby, and like at home you know kind of a thing. Yeah. Uh, and then I had a second trimester loss, where. Baby tummy was big. Yeah. Baby was kicking, moving, growing, then, all is well. And then I suddenly, you know, started bleeding out of nowhere, you know, and then had to go to the hospital. Yeah. They were like, you know. Do you have any know. messages for women who are going through that um, and, and are getting a little bit discouraged? Or, you know, I, I know that yeah. I, I know of one particular person that went through several miscarriages and um, mm. had almost like found herself in a position of blaming her boyfriend or husband at the time. Mm. Like, I can't ever give you kids. Mm. What, do you, what do you say to women that are going through something like that? I think it's really hard for us to remove guilt and shame and also for us to not... To, it's hard to not be able to pinpoint exactly what it is. And yeah. so it's easy to find... Or, or maybe try to place that blame on something or somebody else. I think in life in general, sometimes we just don't understand sure, why sure. the hell we're going through this stuff. And, you know, and, you know, one thing I realized, I think a long time ago, is we may not always have the answers right, right now. You know, we may not. We may uh. not know. And, and unfortunately, we have to we have to lean into not knowing that it's okay to not know right. all of the answers. But how do we continue to move move forward and move on right, right. despite not knowing which is a very hard thing to do uh, which i completely understand how hard that yeah, is yeah for sure and trust me there are lots Girl. and lots of questions okay. i have about <laughs> life <laughs> Well, that I wish I had answers to, you can, know. Kanisha, girl, I think it's fair to say, you know, earlier in the episode, I, I mentioned that you're a warrior and, you, and you've been through so much, so much shit in your life. Um, and, and just kudos to you for, you know, because we, we meet you now and, you know, you're, you're such a light in a lot of people's lives that you that you encounter. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And you're such a great spirit and you're always fun to talk to. And you're, you. you know, you, you find you're just like this. Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> like, you're, you're just, you're like this, there's light in our life, for lack of no. a better term, you know? Thank um, you. Which leads me to, you know, you're an author, and you're a motivational mm-hmm. speaker, and, you know, you, you write about your experiences, and you're, like, we talk about Once Upon a Child, which you guys mm-hmm. can go find on Amazon, and anywhere mm-hmm. you can yeah, pretty absolutely. much find books, you know what I mean? Um you're also writing books for children. Yes. Yeah. So, so you know, we, we have the book. Uh, we have Maddie and Zoe. Yes. Right? And yes. and this comes out in October. Yes. I you know what I mean? And so this is going to be your new book. And then, of course, we have, you know, other books. Like, you know, yes. I turned my mom into a robot, which I definitely want to read. Yes. You know, Creating by Faith. You know, all, yes. all these books that you have. What gave you the courage to to start writing about your experiences? You know, that's for, a good to, to question. To share with people, yeah. Man, that's a good question, Andrew. I think that um, I think and I'm gonna try not to cry. No, no, no. Video, you can cry if you want to, girl, because listen. I've been trying not to cry neither. <laughs> and the Snoop Dogg wine is listen, uh, okay, not helping. It is not helping, Joseph. Right now. Okay, you know, Joe, come on, man. Okay. Come on, man. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> Did that get? Oh, I meant to say. <laughs> oh my gosh! But um, I, you know what's been important to me though. I don't. I know what it feels like. I know what it feels like to to sit in a place of unknowing, um, wrestling. Let it out, girl. You good? Really? I know. Yeah, I'm it's kinda, okay. It's okay. I'm trying to think about we what I was saying. We can smear the pink saying. makeup. You good? You, you know, let, your, look. Uh, let, let yourself. You good? You good? How's it? How's it? Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I know what it's like being in that really hard place, man. Yeah, absolutely. Know. Absolutely. Andrew, I can't tell you how many times I've sat in my closet, wow. just sitting in my closet, just like hurting and crying and not understanding and feeling hopeless and feeling and having and wrestling with doubt and crying and trying to pray and can't think of the words to come out, you know, that words that I think would even matter. I remember, mm. I mean, feeling that way feeling lonely because I went through five miscarriages, but I went through them mostly by myself mm -hmm. oh with, my God. without a large community around oh me my God. and then had other people leaning on me to help them when I had to deal with it by myself. Uh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Divorce, like what made you equipped to do that? Divorce man yeah. by myself. You know, blamed for my divorce, you know, with my ex-husband. Mm -hmm. Struggled, you know what I mean? Struggled with, uh, in, the, in the people department, you know, for a Do for you a think while. a lot of your past experiences may have contributed, th when you look at it now, or do you, you know, so like you mentioned being blamed for your divorce, you know what I mean? And, yeah. I, you know, we're pointing fingers and da-da-da, but like, do you, do you think a lot of your past experiences may contribute to... To the, the the Kanisha that we don't see on camera that's being highlighted like on KWTX that's like you know writing the books and you know there's the spotlight on you because at the end of the day all of us have those skeletons in our closet for the most part Do you know what I mean all mm -hmm. of us have that that way about us that we don't that we don't present to the world like mm -hmm. I girl yeah. oh, my two only my two best friends shout out to Jaime Jaime Gutierrez and Coach Marl Maldonado have been the only two men that have ever seen me break down and sob cry and know about what's going on behind the scenes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you think a lot of your past experiences maybe hinder your ability to be in a successful marriage and stuff like that? And I hope that question doesn't come off disrespectful because you don't have the most love and respect for you. Oh, so, no, no, no. It doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't at all. I think that, yeah, I think the past and the work that I think is still needed in mm. my life, I, okay. I'm like the last person to like deny that. Sure, more therapy would probably be really helpful <laughs> for me. I think I was watching something on TV. I think it could have been last night where someone was says, "Yeah, I was. In, I've been in therapy for like 20 years." You know, like you know, and I'm like, I probably yeah, should have been in therapy okay. <laughs> <laughs> because you know who knew. And here's the thing, though, man. Like I. I done sat and, like, talked to my mom. You think my story is something, mm. you know? You need to hear my mama's story. Girl, part two. Part Listen, two coming. Okay, we're going to – me and Anika are going to Louisiana, and we've been to go pick up your mom. <laughs> but first, we're going to stop for some etouffee. Okay? <laughs> we're going to stop for some, some cr um, crawfish. <laughs> you know, yeah. the, the reason I got into writing – Yeah. Uh, just circling a little bit back to that question sure, sure. is because – when I was a little girl, I will never forget. Like, I was the one who always loved writing. I loved creating stories for other people. And I loved how I did it for my mom, speaking to her. Mm. I would make up these little stories for Mother's Day. And you know what I mean? And I would give her, give that to her for her present. And yeah. she loved it. And, and I was this little kid, this innocent little kid, watching how something I wrote just, like, made her happy. Uh, right. Okay. And I see. And, you know, like small, right? That's small and mm. little, but that was so impactful to me. And right. I was like, oh, I could, you could really brighten somebody's day just by something nice you say to them sure, or just by 100. a gift of mm -hmm. words, you know, that you, a poem or something that you wrote to them right. to make them feel better. So that stuck with me and carried with me over the years. And so when I was, um, when I finally jumped into the writing industry, I ended up, I was working in higher education. Mm -hmm. I had a couple of miscarriages, but this time I, I found out I was pregnant with my oldest son and my doctor put me on bed rest at home. It was like, no work for you. You stay home after what you've been through. Mm -hmm. You need to stay home and be pregnant, you know? And yeah. I was like, you know, 
you don't really know me. I'm type A. I need to be doing something with my Girl, life. Okay. What am I supposed to do? Same, you know, same. I can't just sit in the bed. <laughs> I love trying to act like I'm going to be at home all day in bed. But here I am at four in the morning, two mile run. Don't play with me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Listen, I got to yeah. be doing something. I can't just be in bed. Sure, Doctor's not sure. going to work for me. So, but I ended up picking up writing again. So you started writing. Okay. I, it got back into writing. Yeah. Dove into the industry, met a lot of great people, ended up yeah. going into some industries and learned An accomplished so collection, much. girl. Yes. Yeah. That book right there you're holding is actually something I made for students at my class. Create at, and Blossom. At MCC. Yeah. It's with, oh, I'm girl. It my, it's all about publishing. You know I got to take one of these books to the house. Don't play with me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you guys something. Kanisha is a whole queen. Don't play with her. <laughs> Okay, she don't care what nah. she's been through in life. One thing about her is but, she's been to get on that. I bet that camera hate to see her coming. <laughs> <laughs> don't play with her. <laughs> she ain't kidding. No, but oh, you you, you have an established collection of books, Kanisha. And thank so, you. do you do you think that writing about your experiences and you know sharing it with the world and the people that read through it, do you think that it's almost like a therapeutic outlet for you? Yes, for what you've been through. It is. Mm-hmm. It is. It is so good for me. And so. Um, not only have I realized that for myself, but I've seen it for other people. So I get to help other people write their write their books too. That's a part of what I get to do. I create and blossom. Um, and in fact, I just recently um, had. Uh, in fact, I'm currently working on a book project for a nonprofit organization that helps veterans and first responders. So I know m- my story sounds crazy, but when I sit and listen to other people do it, for mm. some reason, it's like. They feel so comfortable just sharing all these details about right. war and about all this other tragedy and things that they have seen for in their sure, own lives. Sure. And I get to help them, you know, have Oof. write that down, you know, for others to be able to read so, it. So you help mm-hmm. people. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I actually serve sure. as a as a writer. And so you you I would say maybe ghostwriter, but I love to coach other people to help them write their books. Rappers, while y'all be in my DMs. See? Get with, okay? Get with, get with Kanisha, girl. I'm so tired of y'all in my DMs talking about, can you play my rap song on the public? Get, get with Kanisha, because I heard some of them rap songs. And a few of you can use a ghostwriter, too. Okay? She'll give you the credit. I'm going to help you up. I'm going to hook Kenesha, you up. Kanisha, okay? what's your favorite book that you've written that so I far? Written? Oh, man. Mm. Honestly, I love my children's books. Like, of course, I'm biased. I love yes. them all. I, I really need to get love. No. that one there. Natty and okay. Zoe's one. Yes. This uh, one comes out. But are you just saying that because it comes out in October? You, you're trying to plug it in, girl. Okay. But I'm going to do a little plug. <laughs> I want you to give this to my best friend and their wife and his wife because they're having yes. a baby soon. Please. Oh, yes. Will you yes, sign yes, it for him? I'll buy it from yes, you. Yes, of course. I see no, that it's nine ninety nine U- United States dollars. <laughs> A girl, I'll cash up you another twenty five. Please <laughs> <laughs> No, but okay, no, no, honestly, your your favorite big that you've written would be Yeah. You know what? Honestly, I think I think Once Upon a Child is mm-hmm. One of my favorites. Okay, was uh, that one of the first ones you've written? It is actually one of the first ones. Gotcha. It, it could be the second that I that I actually wrote and published. Yeah. I think. Yes, because that was the one. And actually, I went back. And revised it to add, because after I had a few miscarriages, I actually had another one, which is the second trimester loss. So I went back and added oh, wow. that story to the book. Yeah. So just just because I know how impactful that has been. Got and you. I have had a lot of people I know that unfortunately went through it and looked to me for guidance and for support. And that's why I decided to share my story so I mm. can have an encouragement, you know, inside, you know, for, for other women that have gone through it. But I love my children's books too. Yeah, I yeah. Do. That, that's I like a, that you write children's fun. books. I do. Yeah. I definitely got to I got to get with I turn my mom, mom into a robot. robot. That's got to I, I feel like this book right here because I was reading some of the reviews and stuff. That yeah. can be that can be a book for moms and for moms. It could be. For mothers. No, no, yes. honestly because mother, y'all be doing the most. Man. You know what? You guys work a whole full-time Everything. job then go home and have to feed something. Listen. Change their change their underwears cuz they crap their diaper oh, or whatever. God. You know what I mean? And yeah. You don't, so, you don't so want to know so what much. happened before I came here. Oh no, I don't girl. Please. <laughs> Please don't. All my best friends have children, and I'm like, oh, Look. good luck to you guys. Woo, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Kanisha, you know, I, I just want to give my hats off to you, you know, for everything that you've accomplished. And regardless of the circumstances that you've been through, you know, you mentioned coming from the hood of New Orleans, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? The hood that we don't get to see, mm-hmm. being raped your first time when you were 12, it's fair to say. Well, uh, yeah, assaulted. At assaulted 12, at 12, then, raped mm-hmm. at 19. Mm-hmm. Um, even one time is too many. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, divorce mm-hmm. more than mm-hmm. once is what it sounds mm-hmm. like. Um, all mm-hmm. these things that you're going through. And then you're a mother of seven children. Seven. Seven children. Yeah. Girl. 
How do you do it? What what's the what's the secret? Is there a secret? I don't know. No, Mm -hmm. there's no secret to tell you the truth. I'm gonna be super real. Every day we're trying to figure it out. Yeah. (laughs) Every day. So what is your advice to the mother out there struggling, the woman out there struggling that's just like I I gotta throw in the fucking towel. Like I don't know what to do. You know what I I mean? Yeah, just hang in there. I you know, Mm -hmm. and honestly, that's probably one of the best pieces of advice that other moms have told me, take it a day at a time, right. you know, as you can with your kids, you know, they're, they're just kids, you know, and they're trying to look to you, lean into you sure. for your guidance, for your love, for your nurturing. And God has really given us the ability to, to give to give them the love, you know, yeah, we're definitely. equipped with it. Right. For so sure. we're strong enough to be able to do it. And I and at times have to remember that myself, you know, especially in times like today when there was like, you know, awful things that was kind of happening at the house before I left. Okay. Thank to God I had the Snoop Dogg wine. You know. On deck. Listen. Can you show We thank you. To the woman, to the woman watching this podcast, to the mother watching this podcast, wh- which book do you want them to read to, oh. to help empower them? Oh my gosh. To tell you the truth, I think Creating by Faith. Would be a really good this book. Now, that's a small little bitty Bible study. Yes. yes. And the reason that I made, look, I made that one quick. You know how like Girl. Beyonce be making albums and, okay, say, and then say nothing them. and yes. just drop them? Kanisha couldn't so, sleep look, one night and wrote a book. Don't play with her. It's literally <laughs> how it went. It was a weekend. And wow. boom, there was a book. Okay. And really because a lot of my authors, you know, are, are people in the faith too. And they want to tell their stories or they want to help other people yeah. get closer to God. Or they're trying to do what they truly believe that they were inspired to do by God too. And so I just wanted to create a resource for them yeah and that i'm telling you no matter what it is you're trying to do even if it's a writer then that's great or if you're mm. trying to build a business or you know start something new a new hobby or a new job school whatever sure. it is that you're trying to do for yourself even just life as a mom i'm sure there's something in that book that'll okay okay you. now now can yeah. girl before we go because you know we are running out of time but okay. i definitely <laughs> want you to plug in so we got natty and zoe mm-hmm. now i told you that i wanted you to sign this for my best friend um but but they're having a boy. So can this be okay. a boy book too? Yes, or of course. It could be for a little boy. It so could be the, for a boy so they can read it for story time. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I guess it's because it's pink and I'm a child in the nineties. So I, I just, know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so pink no. was for girls and blues for boys. I don't yeah, think I'm right? there. But you know, my, son, my son Caleb is in there. Oh, your son Caleb is in yes. here. Shout out to Caleb. Okay. He's in there. Talk there to me is. about your new book. What inspired Natty and Zoe? Oh the Best God. Adventure Award. Uh what yes. what inspired you to write this book and to put it out into the world and and to share this part of the story? What is the story about? Yes, yeah, so that's about my two daughters. Oh, okay. Natalina, we got her Natty. Her mm-hmm. name is Natalina and Zoe. And so they are 14 months apart, mm-hmm. little girls. Uh, one of, I think Zoe just made six in August, and Natty will be making um, five in October. Sure. When I tell you they are two peas in a pod, trust me, When if, I, if they were here, they they are they cannot do life without one another. Got they you. are just like little little Irish twins, I suppose they call them. Oh, okay, <laughs> they're super close together, yeah. but they are also very different, you know. And yeah. I just noticed that about them in real life. I'm like, you know, one just loves to be the sure. princess. All the oh, Zoe just has to. Well, right now she's on the Wednesday kick, so she okay. loves Wednesday Adams. So this is Zoe, and then Natty's the one with the rain boots. Yes, and the overalls outside playing outside <laughs> with that the dirt. Is my, oh gosh, that is my girl. <laughs> I'm digging the interracial family concept. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that is yes. Yeah, From gotcha. the time of creating the book, I was, you know, yeah. <laughs> yes, you know. <laughs> Go see this interview like. <laughs> it's your show. <laughs> look, I'm a- <laughs> to drink more so, <laughs> yes yes that okay. is yes so so is, so is it a story based on on true events or is it kind of like a fictional story that you wrote around your daughter it is a fictional story okay. that is written around my daughter I got you. okay got you yes. i love that do, do yes. you think that things like this would, would help inspire your children to become successful in the future yes you know yeah. that is a big 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 part of my hope not only that but I, i'm hoping that with my company that they'll want to come on board like my son used to do some social media work for me yeah my teenage daughter Carissa actually 
love just it. Just recently asked, well, mommy, can I come to your office and do some work for you? Oh, okay. And I'm like, yes, let's, yeah, let's she, make this a family She thing. raises employees. Don't play with her. You know, okay. Look, <laughs> yes, okay. You, okay. Minimum you're wage. Gonna, yeah. <laughs> but you know what, though? My kids yeah. can probably tell you how to publish a book. They have been Got watching you. me do this. Yeah, yeah. Making children's books for other people over the years. Yeah. For, I mean, for a long time. And since they were babies, even my teenagers since sure, they were sure. babies. So they that's all they know. Mommy helps people I make books. I love it. You know, yeah. they've, they've seen, they've come to me for different like workshops and things that I have taught and I have spoke at. Like I, I take them with me. So I got be you. a part of it. Yeah. Kanisha, I love it. Okay. So the yeah. book is released October. October 22nd. October 22nd. We can get it on Amazon. Yes. You we, can pre-order it now. Got you. Okay. So make sure yeah. you guys head over to Amazon. Um, Natty yes. and Zoe is the book. October 22nd. Yes. Um, excuse me. I have the exclusive copy. I'm not sharing. <laughs> Don't play with me. I'm not asking you guys to read it. Okay. Kanisha, is there, is there, what's, what's in the future for you, Kanisha? Yeah. Well, I actually have a couple of events that are coming up. So I'm really mm-hmm. excited about that. I'm going to be at the Barnes and Noble in Waco. Yes. And I think that is for November the 9th. Mm-hmm. If I remember correctly, November 2nd, I'll be at Barnes & Noble in Harker Heights. And then I'll be at Fable December the 4th. Oh, okay. Yeah, Good I'll be doing, yeah I've got some events coming up around the city. I'm so and, excited. And obviously more books on the way. Definitely more okay, books on the way. Okay, got you. Yes. <laughs> more I'm novels, not... in fact. So I, I oh. haven't done a good novel in a while. Yeah. I do have um, a series of novels that I that I wrote, but I do have a new uh, fantasy novel that I will be releasing, I'm hoping, for next year. I love so it. I'm working well, on it. Yeah. Kanisha, can I just say <laughs> that I think waiting four years to be on The Public Affair was definitely the right move. I yes. think that this was the right time to do it. I, I want to <laughs> Thank you for being patient with me, um, oh, you know, under the circumstances. And not that I don't ever want you to think that I was sleeping on you. I just, no. my gut had to tell me that it was time. And I really hope that the woman, the person's watching this episode will really, yeah. will really find um, inspiration, will really find um, drive to keep moving forward, yes. um, to achieve their dreams, to, to move forward from any grief, any any hardships that they're dealing with in their life. And I want to thank you for being so vulnerable with me and my and my listeners and my my viewers and Thank you so much for coming onto this podcast and trusting this platform to tell your story. And I wish you nothing but the best of luck in all your future endeavors. Truly, I do. Oh, thank you. So Andrew. thank you, thank you, thank so, you, thank you. To so everybody, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the Public Affair. My girl Kanisha Griffin. Now, before we continue, uh, before we leave, <laughs> I'm tired. Um, I definitely want to use this opportunity to give the shout out to just a few more, just a few more of the sponsors of this episode of the Public yeah. Affair. This episode is brought to us by Jay Pedal and Poke with Junior Fuentes, who and his entire family, hot, provides delicious savory Japanese crepes and poke bowls. They also have handcrafted Thai rolled ice cream for dessert okay if you've mm-hmm. never been to J-Pedal I want you to try it, it, it it's an it's a option that is more fresh more healthy mm-hmm. do you see what I'm saying especially mm-hmm. after a good workout if you're like me you do a lot of workouts mm-hmm. um, and you want something that's not gonna you know bloat you or anything like that high in proteins yeah. you gotta hit up J-Pedal and Poke University yeah. Parks Drive Hewitt Drive or you can even order on their app at J-Pedal make sure you guys download the app J-Pedal and Poke thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of the Public Affair of course you know we gotta give a shout out again to my boy Sid Rodriguez at Elite Barbershop okay. you know the whole team at Elite Barbershop looking like snacks making me Kanisha and Joseph <laughs> Hester looking like some snacks All right, Look. you can call the number on the screen to book download the Squire app walk are welcome as well. They also have Marcus Guerrero, Chris Reyes, Santos yes. Cordova, David Rodriguez, Isaac Chavez, Cliff Fletcher, Isai Reyes, Sam Ceballos, and Kyle Berry over there making like a snack as I have. For more than, what, what episodes? 200 and something. I'm, girl, I'm tired. <laughs> Drunk. 200 and something episodes of The Public Affair. To Elite Barbershop, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. Of course, the Fat Boy Michelada and Botana, which you're going to need to go to Fat Boy Michelada and Botana, girl. Mm. Get you a nice michelada to him to put extra whatever he puts in there to make it nice and drunk. Okay. okay. Yes. Who so, <laughs> provides the best cool. michelada botana <laughs> place for yourself or for a party? My boy Junior Banda is offering the best aguachitas, ceviche, chamoy candy, hot cheeto pickle plates, and so much more. You can book now with an e- for an event or just book for yourself. Or if you're having a big giant party, you need something to bring to the party, he'll make you a whole tray. Listen, Junior <laughs> Banda is doing the damn thing. Make sure you guys get the best and not the rest. The Fat Boy Michelada Botana, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair and to all my friends who are throwing an up-and-coming party, event, or more hummingbird party backdrops and decor. My girl, Ana Limones, is providing beautiful balloon props, giving an extra flair to your party or event. Her husband makes custom wooden backdrops as well. Oh, nice. So, if you know, if you guys need a wooden backdrop for the party, because wooden backdrops are in, balloon arches are in, she's got you, okay? Um, all decorations by my girl, Ana Limones. She leaves no crumbs. She puts her entire being into all of that, and she's truly the goat. So, hummingbird party drops, backdrops and decor. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. To all of you, thank you guys again so much for tuning into this episode. I've got more on the way, of course, to Kanisha. Thank you so much. Thank you so much Thank for, you, for bringing Andrew. your books, for sharing your story with us, oh. and, and best of luck to you. Thank but you guys, don't forget always, always, always to keep it between us. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I was fucked up.
I'm sorry. No offense if that offended anybody. I'm just saying they handle their issues differently. <laughs> I'm for the streets, as I've been told. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This has been a Rogue Media Network production.